Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Celebrate You, the podcast on personal development, career growth, money, and entrepreneurship. Today, we've got Tabata Mata as our guest. First of all, Tabata and I, we went to school together, like maybe kindergarten, primary school, middle school. We were in different classes, but like we know each other from years ago. Uh, and Tabata is, uh, first of all, she's an amazing woman, a mother of a beautiful child. She's also an entrepreneur and founder of Oaxaca en una caja. That means in English, Oaxaca in a box. And she's been featured in Forbes and Entrepreneur Magazine. So, Tabata, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you for that wonderful introduction and presentation. And Thank most you. importantly, for inviting me. Oh, no, it's my pleasure to have you here. Awesome. So today what I want, you have like a very interesting story, like a very interesting entrepreneurial journey because you started from scratch. So today what I'd love to do is to go through your journey and just like to tell us your story and then we can take it from there and go through the ups, downs, the learnings. But you've got a fascinating story. And what I like about your business is it's not just a business. It has proper real impact in Mexican women who are in the, you could say, one of the most vulnerable positions in society. So, yeah, let's start with what's your story? <laughs> sure. Um, I'm going to make a summary of it because um, everything started back in 2013. Yeah. 2012-2013, I, um, well, after living in Mexico, in Mexico City, I uh, moved to France and then to the U.S. And when I was in, in the U.S., I was earning to go back home. Like, I was, I had that feeling that I had to go back. I have, I have been away many years, so... I told myself it's time to go back and, you know, apply all that knowledge that you have earned and learned and apply it and use it for good. You know? So um, I got a job. It was, but, but that's going to be another story because that's another really, really interesting one. I got a job while being in the U.S. to work for the Oaxacan government, the state at the state level. So I was very happy to 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 come back. And plus my family from my dad's side is from Oaxaca. So I have mm. I have roots here. And um so I I decided to move. I, I sold everything that I had, you know, everything I uh closed wow. my bank accounts. I mean all all the all what implies to move. So I came to Oaxaca, Oaxaca, just a, just like a little note. Oaxaca is one of the states that it's located. Well, there are, there are a couple, but it's located near the border with Guatemala. So uh, next to it is Chiapas. And it's one of the most incredible states in all Mexico uh, regarding culture, uh cute like cuisine too the Oaxacan cuisine is very well known beautiful it's delicious yeah. and beautiful as well it's an art I mean um there are different uh, ethnic languages that are spoken here so it's a very rich state but at the same time um is one of the poorest um that's very unfortunate but well so this is Oaxaca so I moved here and I, I started a job working for a center. It was sort of like a think tank. So we uh, did different kind of analysis, uh, statistics. Um, we had a registry of all like uh, projects going on in the state. It was it was a very mm -hmm. interesting job, but I was in charge of the health sector. So I had to 
um, analyze. I did epidemiological surveillance. You know, <laughs> that's actually I studied something regarding to health, health promotion, to be precise. And I did a lot of that. And um, during a meeting, our uh, our the the director, the the director of the center said that we wanted that we have to because it was a new it was a new office so we had to be known because we were going to start receiving more information so he said well i need someone to travel all around the state to spread the word about what we're going to do and to present ourselves because we are going to be gathering yeah. important um data about the state and projects and so forth so I raised my hand and I said, I would love to travel around Oaxaca. During six months, I literally visited, well, there are eight regions in Oaxaca, 570 municipalities. I didn't visit the entire. The yeah, entire, I was like, <laughs> wow. Yes, I think only the governor has done it. But um, I visited about, I don't know, like 300 counties. And in those visits, um, I learned about the wonderful things that are done here regarding handicrafts and also edibles. Edibles, I mean uh, chocolate, mole, uh, coffee, mezcal. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many things that are produced naturally plus here in Oaxaca. So I was amazed about, about, about that. So I came back. And one day sitting at my desk, having my computer right in front of me, I had this eureka moment when I thought about <laughs> what I had learned, what I had experienced, and also um, what had to be done. Because what I heard was that um, they lacked promotions, like the, 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 the small um, producers lacked. Uh, knowledge on how to promote their 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 um, you know their their products their product their products. handicrafts and so forth. So I said, well, w why don't I create something that can help them that can help them promote um, their talent? Also, that uh, something like a pearl that can also have a foundation on fair trade because. Um, here in Mexico, uh, it's especially with handicrafts, artisans are not pay are not paid enough or justly for what they do. So I said, I don't want that. I want them to give me their own prices, and that is going to be included in like the overall price of of my creation of the product that I intend to to make. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, maybe in a box I can have like small samples of all of this, of these different handicrafts and edibles. Coffee, the chocolate. Yes. And I said, well, in a box fits well. You know, you can, I don't want a big box, but I don't want a chest, but something small with like a handle, something that has like um, that locks, you know, to protect all the, the contents. And that is how I came up with a box. And now I, I told, well, that, at that moment, I told myself, okay, well, now what name that, you know, what name, what, what's going to be the brand? And I said, well, yeah. I just, I mean, I want to put Oaxaca in a box. So that was pretty easy. And then after that, I, I mean, I told my mom and she said, okay, I'm going to help you. So we started looking, finding, looking for carpenters. Uh, I, when I, I'm, I was still working for the government. So whenever I had like a free time or my weekends, I went back to some communities to buy stuff so that I can start having my, my first prototypes. And then when I had mm. the very first ones, um, a friend yeah. of mine well, took the first photographs and the launching, how I did it, using Facebook. <laughs> I created a, 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 a fan page, you know, with the first pictures, with my first five boxes. 
and and I told myself, okay, awesome. this is <laughs> this is gonna be also a way to to know, you know, if they're interested in my product, if it's gonna be something, uh, you know, uh, like a small business, if if it can turn into a small business. I mean, yeah, and yeah, it went viral, so I was pretty happy. <laughs> Amazing. So before we go on, by any chance, do you have a box yes, nearby? I, yes, I do. Like one of your boxes. Have, oh, can I you show one. us the box? Sure, absolutely. So this is, a, we have, right now we have 13 models. So as you can see, this is hand-painted, first of all. There's, there, it's, it's not a sticker, you know, it's hand-painted. Each box also. Yeah. And for the ones who are listening only, it's like, it's a beautiful black box. And then in the middle, it's like these Mexican beautiful drawings, handmade, like absolutely beautiful. Very yeah. Much. We uh, find inspiration in textiles. This is actually a, a textile, the design, as you can see, it's from, mm -hmm. um, from Tuxtepec, which is located in the northern part of Oaxaca. So this is the design. Each box is handcrafted. It's literally yep. they're cut individually. It's beautiful. So you can see they have a handle, a nice little handle, so you can carry it like, yeah. like, um, like a small like a bag, like a small, you know, I mean, an easy carry-on too. I thought about that. You know, when people have to travel, they have to take something small. So I even consider that yeah. part. And then you open it. Let, let me remove the plastic cover. Can you show it a little bit? Up? Oh, and then this one. And you this, open it and then you have like yes, goodies, all the beautiful goodies. things inside. So you um, in this box, we have included coffee. This is coffee. This is like a small coffee uh Yeah, like a, a bag. We also have chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah. Bottle of mezcal, which is tradition, like nice. a traditional liquor here. And this is a jicara. It's a small, like a, a water gourd. It's used as a drinking recept, like receptacle. And then worm salt. This is also very pretty. for the mezcal. Yeah, for the mezcal. And then the comes with a little, I think it's a little bit stuck. Let me take out by one by one. And then the small, this is an alebrije. Oh, an alebrije. Yes. Uh, alebrije are wooden figurines. Um, the, the uh, copal tree is actually used to make it because it's it's flexible, so it's not hard oh. to work with, like the trunk of the copal okay. tree. So, um, and the alab. Amazing. Yeah. So this is so, like a very special box. Beautiful. And also, well, this is it comes with our, you know, with our logo. With a, um, yeah, uh, we are also registered trademark, so it's a very well planned business. And uh, yes. well, in this case, you can see, but there's a space too, and sometimes they ask us to personalize the boxes. So mm, we can yeah. write down names or like thank you notes, or I mean, People. Yes, I remember I got it as a present for my auntie and family for Christmas two years ago or something like that, and they loved it. <laughs> yes, yes, and um, also, also what what I like to point out is that once you take out the contents, I mean, you can save the box. You can use it to keep like tea bags or coffee or jewelry or I mean, you name it. So. Um, I also thought about it because I told myself I don't want to contribute to having more waste, you know. So it's a no. very, very well planned and thought pro uh, project turning into business. 
so take us for the journey as in you you basically had this work experience you traveled a lot in the country you got inspired you were like oh let me test this and launch it on facebook how this was about six or seven years ago then how did you go from moving from that stage because i think many of us we are in the oh let me launch a passion project we start on facebook or instagram right but then how did and we start with our friends obviously mm -hmm. uh how did you move away well not move away how did you grow from being just a passion project hobby on a facebook page that you and your mom ran <laughs> on the side to oh it started growing not when you became like big and famous but it's like at the very next stage from facebook to facebook page to oh this has legs it's worth sure. keep going sure and i have that moment very present because um it was um christmas 2014 and a lady actually the mother of a undersecretary of the federal government of Mexico travel only to buy like all the Christmas gifts for her daughter. Hmm. So she had traveled only to buy, I mean, travel to Oaxaca. She had come to Oaxaca Christmas. to buy our boxes because her daughter wanted to give Oaxaca in a box to, you know, to colleagues, to, I'm pretty sure the president of that time got a box. I'm pretty sure <laughs> the Mexican president because she wanted to to give out um, our boxes as Christmas gifts. And when we received her and she said, well, I want like, it's going to be like 50 boxes or 60 boxes. And my mom and I looked at each other and we were like, yes, for sure. I mean, you know, And um, this lady, Mimi, which later became our friend. And yeah. she said, well, I expect them to have them in Mexico. Do you, uh, are you registered in Mexico? You have, um, well, uh, if you want to have big sales, let's put it that way, or become like a, a big provider, you have to register mm -hmm. and become, and get a federal tax ID number. So she asked us about yeah. that, and she's, and I said, yeah, I can give you like a fiscal receipt. That's not a problem. And she said, that's yeah. great. That's great. So she left our workshop, and my mom and I was like, and we were like, my mom back then was, she still have her, her practice. My mom is a dentist, <laughs> by the way, but she loves mm -hmm. to paint. She has always loved to paint. And I was and I was still working for the Oaxacan government. And we were like, my mom was like, I'm gonna give up my practice. I my mom and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit my job. And I and we did. So she closed her her office and like two weeks later I went to I went to and talked to the director and I said, I'm sorry, I, this is my I'm leaving. <laughs> This is my... Wow, yeah, that's very courageous it was, because it was the two of you at the same yes, time. Yes, the two of us, but we saw, I mean, we thought, I mean, if only one people are is buying 50 boxes at the same time, if we have that request, I mean, if we can spread the word and if we can get more contacts, I mean, we can easily sell 400, 500 boxes. And at that time, too, wow. I was making more money, even working on the side, selling my boxes and working for the Oaxacan government. So I was like, oh, wow, that is like yes. a huge point because you're like, well, yeah, my side project is making more than yes. my main job. Yeah. So uh, I was very honest and I I decided to to leave that job and to start. But that was January, right? January 2015. And then February, because I was still new in the in the business world, February is a very slow month, 
like for every business. Mm -hmm. If you have a restaurant, if you have uh, a printing, February is a very slow month. And then so February came and we had no sales. (laughs) So I was like freaking out. I was like, mom, maybe, maybe I, you know, like I went too far away. Maybe I, I, maybe I didn't think like enough about the decision of quitting my job because I was, you know, it was secure. I was safe there. And she said, but you're helping so many people. I mean, you're doing it happily. You're passionate about it. So it's just a matter of time before something big happens. Don't worry. So I was like, okay. And then that's when we were featured in Force Magazine, like at the end of February. That's how. Oh, wow. Yes. Just the, the month that you yes, were panicking, like, at, at the, the end of the month, you I were featured in Forbes magazine. I was crying. I was, you know, telling myself maybe I should go back and, you know, ask for forgiveness. But no, the uh, actually the article, which we didn't know, I mean, we didn't know about it. It was a complete surprise to us. It was published on yeah. February the 25th, I think. Like, and from there, I mean, it's... It was, it was amazing, you know, having so many people sharing the article, friends calling me, other people abroad asking for our catalog. I mean, our sales high rocketed like right away. Awesome. Yeah. So do you also sell uh, to people abroad? Yes. Yes, we do. We do. So I can be in the US, the UK, Europe, yes. Malaysia, and you can send me. <laughs> A beautiful box. Yes, we definitely can. I uh, actually, amazing. We have sent boxes to um, to Spain, to Belgium, France, um, Italy. Actually, the Pope has one. By the way, no, the yeah, Pope. The Pope has Are you one kidding me? Boxes. Yes, he does. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh like, there's one than Forbes for magazine. Sure. Um, I have also. Sh- Wait a second! No, 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 no! I'm like, stop! <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> like, you're so humble. <laughs> you're humble. No, but it's. it's How really did the Pope end up with one of your boxes? Well, it was when he visited Mexico. Um, I think it was 2017 or 16. No, I was I was pregnant. So 2016, um, he visited Mexico and he went to to several states, right? And um, I didn't know, but all the bishops from in Mexico were invited uh, for the entire visit like to to accompany him so i contacted like a bishop from here from the mijes region and i said i wanna this is absolutely no cost to you but i would like to have him a souvenir of oaxaca because he's not coming to oaxaca so this is i mean i would love if you can give him a box in name of the oaxaca of oaxacan people it's no cost, like I'll send it to you, but that's wow. you're okay with that. And the bishop, he was amazing, Hector. He's like, Yes, of course, I'll find the opportunity to give him the box. So he helped out. <gasps> yeah, he sent me like the picture when he actually handed the Pope Francis, Pope Francis the box via WhatsApp. I mean, it was it was very curious, you know. <laughs> wow. Yes. That is that is cool. <laughs> yeah, so I have a picture and it was all over the news too, like here in Oaxaca, you know, because it was a present for the for Pope Francis. Yes. So he has a box. Rigoberta Menchu, the Nobel Peace Prize wow. recipient also has one. I mean different actors and you are an artist, not only an entrepreneur, like you're an artist representing artists. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can, I mean. Yeah. I'm happy that I'm, yeah. no, I'm a promoter. Let's put it that way. Promoter. I'm a promoter. Okay. I promote Oaxaca sculpture through art boxes. 
That's right. Okay. I have like now I have many questions. Okay. <laughs> so I'll fire three questions and then you answer them in the order that you want. Okay. So question one is you mentioned you were pregnant when you were doing all these. So question one is like, how do you do these being a mom? <laughs> That's question one. Mm -hmm. Then question two, it's What's the scariest thing that has happened in the in the business in the past few years? Okay. Uh, question three, I just forgot. <laughs> so let's start with those two. That's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I remember now. Question three, and probably the most powerful one. Uh, you have very clear that you are a promoter, and you have very clear that this is, it seems like from watching you and everything it seems like you have very clear what's your purpose like this is beyond uh of business you have like some sort of like i mean if the pope has your boxes this is not about a business it's like it's about passion yeah. and purpose and heart so let's go into that <laughs> sure I'll start. How, how did you connect to that Okay, I'll start with that one. Um, what drives me is knowing that I'm helping many people, that not only my family is benefited when we sell the box, but when I was showing the box to you, you saw seven items. So there are seven families mm -hmm. involved in that in only that box, not including the mm. carpenters, not including our 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 print, which is also local. So there are many sectors and and families and workshops that are benefited with the purchase of a box, and that's really what. Uh, what um what drives me what as i said before what yeah. it's my mo my my motor my engine um seeing you know uh um uh, the faces of the people when i actually ask you know the artisans i need 50 more rocks i need 50 more bottles i need 300 and to wow. see their expressions and also I can see the impact because many of them, you know, were saving to buy like a small, like a motorcycle so that they can better transport their products. And I know that I helped them in achieving that. Like I, I have also many stories and because I know personally all of them, that's a very important thing that mm -hmm. I would like to, to mention. Like I know all the families I know, um, Whenever they get sick, I mean, it's we're a community. That's it. We're a it's a family like community, and yeah. we all have a place in that community. We have a role that we're playing, and there's no competition between us. They know what we're doing. They know the prices we're getting. We're paying them on time. There's no credit. I mean, um, but to see that impact, the real impact in them that 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 really pushes me to 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 move forward that's for me that's amazing <laughs> yeah did you ever there's a lot of people that ask themselves this question and some people it, they just like stumble across this did you ever ask yourself like what's my purpose or it just like just the the business just evolved no i mean of course, I mean it's a business. I mean, I'm getting, I'm, I'm yeah. making, paid. yeah, I'm getting paid and making an income. My mom as well. We're paying five other people, like our staff. So, yep, it's a business, but it's a it's a social business, and we are an example that a business, a successfully run business, can also have a social impact because. We're, I think we're kind of stuck in like capitalism and just like making money, money, money and without thinking about our the people behind or the people that work with us. So our business proves that if we work together, if we have work ethics, if we are transparent, transparent 
about our practices, we can all uh, work together and we can all like grow together as well. So mm. um, I'm really happy. Uh, we do have a structure, but it's more like an horizontal type. Yes, I'm the CEO. Yes, I, I take administrative decisions, but I don't make the items. You know, the artisans are the masters yeah. and they have a job that they that they do. And we buy that. They're, they're providing us with that. So it's a very noble work. And also, I mean, it's we, we're actually making a living out of it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's how Amazing. I see it. Cool. Okay, so now let's go to question two <laughs> out of those three that okay. came up. Mom. Um, and now I'm talking to Tabata the mom, not to Tabata the entrepreneur. Like, how on earth do you do it? <laughs> how? Um, okay. First, I'm very organized. I'm a very organized individual. And I have set times, like I have my work schedule. And then after 5 p.m., I spend time with my son. I try to do as many things with him and including uh, like, uh, you know, playing games, going out, whatever he wants to do. But that's my time with him. And then if I still have work mm -hmm. after he goes to bed, I might write some emails or just check things for the next day but that's it like i do set times so i think that's that's that has helped me to 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 balance both sides right being, the, mm -hmm. being a, a, a professional and then also like being a, a full-time mom because i'm a full-time mom yes So that I also have a really good support network like around me. My mom is, it's, it's mm -hmm. one, you know, she's always here. So in case I need to go out or something, I know Jorge, it's my son's name, is in good hands also. And we also have other relatives that are, that are also very, um, Helping. very, Uh, helpful or they can support you know they can uh, give me their support if needed that's also and um, what else I can say I and also I think I have learned to put my to know what my priorities are like oh that's so important yes I think nowadays we need to prioritize and to determine what's what's the most important things for us to achieve. So I've done it. I've done it. I mean, it took me some time, <laughs> but I prioritize. So. so when you mean prioritize, do you mean need to prioritize what are the most important things to do in the business or more of like the work-life balance. Like today, it's more important that I go to my son's festival and then the other thing will come up or, well, probably it's both, right? Or we were chatting the other day and we were like, oh, can we reschedule because I got a huge order now, <laughs> you know, and I need to focus and do that. Uh, yeah. What do you mean with priority? Yeah, to, to know the difference between, you know, like what are... What means the most to you, you know, like. What means the most to you. That's a beautiful definition of prioritization. Yes. I mean, that's, that's how I see it. Um, regarding work uh, before, before I, I, I started this journey too, because as I said, it has also been a, a self-knowing journey. I was, I would work nonstop. I was. I would freak out if I didn't answer an email, you know, or if, if I didn't answer like someone, even if that other place, person or client wrote me at 10 at night, I was like, no, 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 I have to answer. I have to answer. You know, it's like, and I, I would say, no, I mean, 
I can answer tomorrow because right now mm. I'm going to, you know, I should be sleeping or I'm going to be reading. I mean, so I'm not going to stress about that because it's not worth it. I rather, you yeah. know, spend that time with my kid if, if he's still awake because he usually goes <laughs> to bed at night. But if not, I rather spend that time reading him a book and just making sure he goes mm-hmm. to bed. So, I mean, my my I think my thinking has shifted too. So now I know what means the most. And my, my son, my time, also having time for myself too. Like having my own time is very important. So that's why I I, I reserve time or, or I put time aside for reading, for taking a class if I can. You know, I mean, those are things that I that I have come to learn but through through the yeah. years. Amazing. Cool. Yeah, because it's like we learn. Just by, there's not a textbook answer. It's just to learn with practice, trial and error. And sometimes you're like, oh, I did it again. But then you you learn again. Yeah. And then you improve. Yes. Okay. So what's the scariest moment in the business? Scariest moment. COVID-19 was pretty scary. <laughs> It's still pretty awesome, scary. Awesome. Because I was going to ask you about that as well. I'm like, how did you survive COVID? So let's mix those two. The the scariest moment was COVID. Uh, of course, the pandemic has changed every single every single business on earth. Yes. How did you manage this transition? And you're still alive as a business. Yes. So. Yes, we, we survived. Oh. No, and um, yeah, I, I'm really, and I have many friends whose business, I mean, and their whose businesses didn't survive, and and I feel grateful. I mean, about mm-hmm. about um, how we manage, but well, a couple of things. Uh, yes, we were hit. We were uh, greatly hit because our business we are um, catering or we are moving towards like corporate gifts and also as like um, wedding favors or other special occasion gifts. So with COVID, I mean, all of those special occasions, events, expos stopped. So we were like, okay, what are we going to do now? Right? So... Um, we had saved some money, so we had put some money aside, which was, it was, it was helpful because it helped us to continue, you know, uh, to continue paying bills and salaries for some time. So, um, I highly suggest to, for people to save for business owners because you never know when you might, but. It's just important to save, and not to save to invest it. Not to save. I'm not many. I'm not saying to to save money to buy. You know, if you need like a, if you need a, debt, you know, like a equipment, but to save for emergencies. So that's we've done yeah. it. Also, before the uh, the pandemic hit, we were already selling on internet. So mm. we didn't like feel, you know, or we weren't stressed about, oh, now we need to, you know, open Facebook and Instagram and we need to figure out how we're going to, because we already, we're already, ready. we're already selling uh, via social media and, 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 I mean, and, and in other portals and, and e-commerce sites. So, I mean, that kind of help us too because we continue to have sales and to to make shipments and so but um but of course we knew that we were not going to have big sales the ones that, that were, we were used to so we had different dynamics like dynamics that we implemented uh we started offering like discounts you know uh in, on, on purchases With other female entrepreneurs, we had like different uh, strategies between the, the all of us, like sharing and 
our post and like recommending mm. each other businesses and that also help out. And we also started shipping like boxes only with food products, um, like just plain boxes, like uh, and uh, oh, yeah, like a grocery, not the yeah, like a small ones. grocery, yes. but like a gourmet oh, grocery. So you iterated the business, yes, kind of, yes. a new product line, cheaper, way cheaper, just to have yeah. like a sample, and that also helped us to to continue having income. Um, we also started like selling handicrafts, but like big, big size handicrafts, like normal handicrafts. And another, another business, yes. another, another product, product, line. product yeah. line. And that, that went well too. And I mean, those were the, I don't know, like those were like the different strategies that implemented. We also work with mezcal producers and, um, you know, they would contact me and say, uh, I have this person that, you know, this client that wants my mezcal, but he needs it like as a gift. Like, so can you make me the box? Yes, I'll make you the box. You know, so having that um, working as a team also helped out. Mm -hmm. So, um then, well, December came and um, all the Christmas season, and that's like our biggest season. So we we yeah. had important sales, uh, fortunately, and and that's that's pretty much it. Good, good. Well, congrats! I'm like you did a great job to stay alive and being creative on how to come up with other sources of income based on what you already have it's not like you were like oh i'll start another business it's like what do i currently have how can i iterate it such that yeah. i can survive exactly yeah exactly amazing exactly. so what are you doing now because i was going to ask i was going to ask what advice can you tell other people who are about to start their business or passion project. But uh, before I go into that, like you are working in very interesting projects right now, uh, helping small entrepreneurs as well. So what are you doing? Yes. So last year too, um, I was invited to coordinate a program called Mujeres Ave uh, or Ave Women that uh, it's a program, actually uh, an international uh, program. Um, there are different donors. Uh, one is in the UK, the other one in, 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 in Switzerland, and then local ones. So the program, they needed a coordinator. It's an amazing program. It consists of, um, well, there are very co various components to it. So... The core is a, a training program for female business owners. So it lasts, it's about three months long and they receive uh, training on cost analysis, registries, salaries, working together with other women. It, it's, it also has um, components of like uh, female economics. Feminist economics. It's it's um, really aimed towards female owners, and we work mostly with um, uh, with women that live near the biggest dump site in the state. The municipality is Achila, and just by me saying that, I think you can get a sense of the complexity of the context in which these women live because the economy there evolves around form informal recycling or waste making. Mm. So um, we work with, with this. Currently there are 70 women in the program. So they follow this uh, training uh, business curricula. And then they also have free access to uh, a psychologist. We have a psychologist on the team. And she provides a therapy cool. at no cost, also legal services. 
And right now we just uh, signed a collaboration agreement with a, uh, a dental clinic also so that they can have access to to dental um, uh, services at a really low cost. It's a very, uh, in, very integral program, integral program. Uh, we have monthly meetings. Uh, we also help them to uh, open in case they determine that they need that. Uh, Facebook pages, Instagram. Um, we also help them in, in, in finding places where they can also sell their products. And um, in this in this program also, I'm not only helping, um, we're not because we, I have a team behind me. I'm not doing all the job by myself. I have a, a, a very, very good team behind me, all women, all women, we're all women. Yeah. And um, we, um, in the program, we not only help um, artisans, there are also women uh, with other kinds of businesses, such as uh, uh, beauty parlors, uh, um, restaurants, you know, like a small, small restaurants, mm, business, like cyber, cafe, cyber, cyber cafes, um, also women that sell products like that um, by catalog, you know, it's catalog sales, that's what it's yeah. called. And uh, other kinds of products and, and services, right? It's, it's it's a very interesting program, but I'm really happy to to be able to part to be part of it and also to transmit my knowledge and my experiences with them. So, yes, um, I'm very happy. that is so fulfilling. I think it's very fulfilling too. It's very fulfilling, and um, we are all women you know, the team and also the participants. And we can all relate. I mean, um, it's 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 another community that, that we have that we have created with them. And we're expecting more groups, more more groups of Amazing. participants. Our the goal of the project is three hundred women. So we're halfway through. Okay. Um, we're definitely growing and we're finding, um, other, you know, other, other ways that we can also have more impact in, in this, uh, in, in women's uh, lives. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Cool. Okay. So as a last question, like you've covered, like, it's so interesting to hear your story because it's properly the story of a self-made entrepreneur. So, and just started like properly with a inspiration moment, followed by a Facebook page <laughs> and how your boxes are with the Pope. <laughs> uh, so what, what would be your top advice for someone who's just getting started? It has like the inspiration moment and they, they are kind of dabbling, they are testing, but they are still not seeing the, you know, like the results they are still not obviously not in Forbes magazine like you but it's like they are still struggling to put things together okay um couple of uh of just a couple of tips mm, you're gonna need a lot of patience and you're gonna have to be very consistent and you have to learn how to be perseverant. Those are like three qualities that you have to develop. I mean, those are essential to having a, a successful business. Like those, the pillars of, of having a, a successful mm -hmm. business. That's... Um, you have to be aware that you're going to make some sacrifices regarding your time. You're going to have to invest money or resources yeah, or other kind of resources. So you have to be very, very well aware of that. 
And by sacrifices, I don't mean like, no, you're going to be, you're not going to be sleeping and you're going to be tired all the time. No, but it, I mean, there are going to be days that you will have to not go to a certain reunion or to skip, you know, some things, some just to actually to destine that time to your, to your, um, to your, um, what's the word? To your business or growing baby. business. Passion your baby project. business. Exactly. So that's also, um, right now there are many, I mean, thanks also to COVID-19, there are many resources online and free classes online. I highly recommend because back in the day when I started, everything cost money. Everything was, and everything used to be very expensive. So I wasn't able to afford, I mean, I took some like free classes and so, but right now, I mean, there's so much information out there. I mean, I highly suggest to, to also, um, uh, take and, and, and take, uh, you know, whatever to take, um, classes and courses on, on business administration because you're gonna you're gonna need it too. Uh, what else what else can I say? Um, you I, I would say also that um, if you are very determined, you know not mm -hmm. if you're very determined. Um You know, you have your, your, your idea and you're really passionate about it. Go for it. There are going to be many obstacles. You know, there are going to be people around you that are going to say, oh, no, it's not going to work. There are going to be many people and many obstacles. But if you have that feeling inside you, really, really, that into its intuition, it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to be worth it and just go for it. Go for it. Whatever you go take. for it. That is that is the final yes. word. Go, go for, for it. it. I knew it when I when I visualized the box in my head. I was like, "This is it. This is this is what I want to do." I mean, and you have this feeling. So just um, listen to that to the little voice inside you that says it's gonna work because it's gonna work. But you're gonna have to develop these qualities that I mentioned. You're gonna have to spend time on your project. You're gonna, you're gonna, um, you're gonna also spend time, you know, uh, learning about how to run a business. And but right now, it's as I said, it's very easy. You know, you can um, open fan pages. You can open profiles. I mean, there are also many social like networks out there that you can use. So mm -hmm. the tools, you have them. They're right in front of you. Just make use of them. Yeah. Amazing. Cool. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in the show. Uh, there is so much wisdom in your words and so much like natural inspiration. Because you know what I've noticed is there is many entrepreneurs, at least in the fintech, in the tech side, that it's very like, go, go, go. It's, it, they have like a very aggressive, uh, it's not that it's aggressive. It's, well, yeah, it is. <laughs> like, whoa, 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 energy. And with you, I feel like a much more uh, human energy, softer energy. And that makes it even more powerful than the forceful energy. And that, that is super cool. Thank you. Because that shows that, especially as women, like we don't have to go into the male masculine energy mode, aggressive, go forceful. We can just like lean into our natural talents, our intuition, be guided, <laughs> do it one, you know, like one step at a time and it will work. Support each other. Yes, it works. But also, I mean, because now that you mentioned just one, one last thing, 
yes, I, 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 I understand what you mean. I have, you know, I'm more human oriented, you know, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, um, I take care of the people that I work with, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, they can contact me, they can call me. I mean, I'm always there. I'm available too. But also at the same time, I have, I have learned to be tough in business. Yes. Because that's a very good I mean, point. The beginning, yes. It's not either or. No, it's, both. it's both. Good to clarify. You have to yeah, learn very these good to clarify. different skills. But uh and and the like in the in the but you're gonna learn them when to use it. That's and you know, when to use I actually um You know, I've been in meetings with men only, like with um, and presidents of like business chambers, and I don't feel threatened anymore. You know, I'm not thinking, you know, they're going to see me as a girl with a project or as a woman with a skirt. No, I'm there. And I transmit that because also my self-esteem has grown with my business. So I definitely encourage mm. women to there also like to uh, learn on leadership skills, negotiating too. That's very important because it's proven that women lack the skills to negotiate, for example, salaries. You know, that's one of the reasons why we're not getting paid as much as men, because we don't know how to ask for a raise. That's that's yeah. something that yeah. really like um, that really astonished me. So, but I know you know I know how to respond as soon as I'm, for example, my business. Oh, can you give us a better price? No, I'm sorry, you know I can't because each box is unique. You're helping right now. We're currently helping 80 families, so I cannot tell them that to these people, but to the, all the people behind them. Oh, okay. But I have learned. Okay. <laughs> you know, so yes, of course. Yes, I'm as I said, like I'm I I I'm very passionate. I I have a sense of caring and but also I have learned to be determined, to be tough, to say no. That's also <laughs> very important to say no. And uh and that's I mean, I guess that's that's about it. Amazing. It's been a beautiful episode and a marvelous ending. Yes, it is about the duality that I've talked about sometimes before. It's like we have that ability to go into the more human side and we have access to the more aggressive, determined, confident, negotiating, uh, ambitious traits as well so when you put them together then it's like Wah! <laughs> magic happens yes <laughs> but i'm still learning i'm still learning yes of course I'm we are way. all work in progress mm -hmm. no thank you so much monica Perfect. for your time thank you thank you tabata it's been an absolute pleasure having you in the show uh for everyone listening speak with you next week and go back and re-listen take a few notes What's your favorite part? And then take action. Remember that knowledge without action is just knowledge. So if you want to move towards forwards in your business, it's important that you take action. Thank you, everyone. And speak to you very, very soon. Bye.